What is up, everybody? Today we're going to be talking about the difference between stainless steel and steel and our copper strike. So should copper strike be an activator for stainless steel? And I would say no, because it needs to be a pretreatment for this. But for steel, copper strike is perfect for being an activator, and I'll show you why. So when we first start off, we're going to get our electro clean and just, we're gonna just test this piece. And this is the benefits of brush plating is because the sleeves on them are more abrasive than bath plating. And you can tell way faster if your part is stainless steel or if it's steel. So for stainless steel, Stainless steel needs an activator other than copper strike, so you would need wood's nickel to activate your steel. So for this piece of steel, we just electro cleaned it, so we'll spray it off, and then this is why you shouldn't use copper strike as an activator. So we'll turn it down to its usage. I'm gonna do 3.5, like because this is a little harder to plate onto. And right away, you can see like it's trying to plate onto it with that copper strike, but when I'm using the brush, it's wiping it right off. You can see it's going on, but my brush is wiping it straight off as I'm trying to plate onto this part. So obviously, copper strike should not be used as an activator for stainless steel. So where things get tricky is when you're doing the bath plating system. The advantage of using the brush plating is that your brush is a little more adhesive, so it wipes it right off. But with our bath plating, um, it, you can't really tell. So like this piece, I bath plated it. Obviously, I tested it on this side, and it started coming off. But if you, sometimes when you're bath plating, you can even tape test your piece and the copper won't come off. See, you can see like nothing came off when I tape tested it. So I'm going to go plate this piece in nickel and we'll see what happens after we plate it in a metal. All right, so I just bath plated this in nickel and I can already tell something is wrong with my piece. It's having this little edge come up. And I'm like, hmm, what is that? Anyways, but the problem with using copper strike as an activator on steel is that in the, br the bath plating, um, in the bath plating is that you, you can plate it and it can look fine. You can tape test it and it will pass the tape test. But right when you put nickel on, you can see it rips that nickel right off and you can see kind of like the copper color underneath um, the nickel does not stay on or it this even works with gold it doesn't even the gold doesn't stay on either so for stainless steel copper strike is more of a pretreatment than it is as an activator so use it as a pretreatment because um, you need to use woods nickel for an activator for stainless steel. So now we're gonna do this properly. And what you would do is just electro clean your part, just how you normally would. Okay, rinse it off. And now we would use Wood's Nickel Strike to activate our part, just like that. Rinse this off good. And now you can use your copper strike. And I'm gonna turn my voltage down just a little bit, about 3.2, start there, just to play it safe. And if it doesn't go on, then I can increase it, but. Yeah, always start with a lower voltage and then increase it if it's not going on very fast. But I can tell here 
is starting to go on. So we'll increase it just a little bit to like 3.5. There we go, you can see it going on. Increase it just a little more. There we go, now you can really see it going on. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for this piece. Um, I didn't wanna plate it too much because it's just a sample piece just to show off. But now we can get our test plate. Let me dry this off. Now we can get our tape test. Our tape test, put it on there. And I do not think that will rip off, yep. That is A-OK. -okay. And now for, so you need a pre-treatment, or an activator, sorry, you need an activator for stainless steel um, to use the copper strike as a pre-treatment. So you're going to need something to, so your electroclean, your activator, and then for stainless, you'll use um, your copper strike as a pretreatment. But for steel, this is a steel screw, um, just a mild steel screw. It was zinc plated, we removed the zinc. So for a mild steel screw, not a stainless steel, you can just go through your um, treatments and stuff, like your electroclean, you can electroclean it just like normal. And then your copper strike will be used as an activator. So we'll rinse this off. So for still, you can use your wood's nickel as an activator just to play it safe. I know a lot of people use activators and not the copper strike as an activator, but for steel, copper strike will work as an activator. You can see that just going on just fine. We'll get every part of this screw at the top. You can see that copper strike going on there just fine. So it just depends um, if you're using stainless steel or if you're using steel there's two different methods of doing copper strike so for stainless you'll need your activator um, to activate it and then you can use copper strike as a pretreatment and for steel you can just use copper strike as your activator and not as a pretreatment we'll tape test this real quick let me dry it off. All right, we have that screw. We'll just put our tape on it. Wrap it around. Try to rip it off and nothing is coming off. See, just like that, no copper strike. So, yeah, use Copper strike as an activator for steel parts and use copper strike as a pretreatment for stainless steel parts. I hope this video helped just a little bit um, to understand the difference between stainless steel and steel and how to plate copper strike onto them. So if you enjoyed and this video helped, please give it a like and comment if you have any questions and go visit us on our website. Um, to ask any other technical questions, and thanks so much for watching.